Hello machine shop fans, it's Tubal Kane again. I'm going to give you a little lesson today on micrometers. I suppose it's something that most of you already know plenty about and many people do not even use uh, cali uh, micrometer calipers anymore. They're using uh, digital calipers and dial calipers and so on and I do use them myself as well but I do prefer regular micrometers for lathe work. Uh, far over the calipers but there are many many different kinds of, cal of uh, micrometer calipers and I think I'll go over just a few of them right now. Uh, the, the common outside calipers are available in many sizes starting with a one inch and then uh, moving up to a two and a three and a four and a five inch. Now all of these micrometers really only have a one inch uh, movement but the, the frames are larger and uh, they go f for instance this one is from one inch to two, even though we call it a two inch micrometer, we would call this a three inch micrometer, but it goes from two to three and so on. And uh, there's many variations, many different uh, manufacturers. I prefer the Sterrett, but it's totally a matter of preference. And uh, as far as I know, they're still made in America. I don't buy any of these new, these are all picked up at auctions and garage sales and so on and I have many more than what I need but I kinda have a passion for them. Micrometers have been around a long time and here's an antique one that I just had in my collection and uh, I don't know how old this is but it's certainly well over a hundred years and it could even be like two hundred years. It's uh, European, I, I believe it to be French and it's a micro, uh, metric micrometer and uh, it only goes up to about a half inch which would be what about 12 or 15 uh, millimeters. It's made of German silver so it's kind of a, a neat looking thing and the screw is exposed which would be a hindrance of course. This thing is so old I'm just imagining that Napoleon himself possibly could have hold, held this at one time. There are of course uh, digital micrometers and this is a mechanically digital one. I do not own any of the uh, di the uh, electronic digital ones and uh, to be honest with you I'm sick of things that have batteries. Here's another one that is a uh, Mitutoyo mechanical but it's uh, metric. These are nice if you're not in the mood for taxing your brain. But what I use mainly is this stare at one inch that my dad gave me when I was still in high school and I still got it and that's kind of the one that I grab when I'm doing smaller work. This is a stripped down model that is there is no spindle lock, there is no ratchet uh, adjustment on it or anything like that. Now micrometers can, are like cars, they can be bought with all kinds of uh, doodads and attachments. Uh, here for instance is a uh, stare at two inch and it has the friction lock so you can lock it and it'll pretty much stay where you set it and it has a, a ratchet here on the end perhaps you can hear that but when you tighten it uh, with the ratchet then you know that you're getting about the right uh, amount of pressure on it. The kids at school often would uh, take too, uh, tighten it down too much and get a false reading and to be honest with you, use them uh, kind of like a C-clamp would be used, so they would abuse them greatly. Some micrometers have a, a carbide anvils. This is the anvil and this is the spindle, but the very ends on these are made of carbide, so they would really probably never wear out or wear or be damaged. If you take a look at the Sterrett catalog you're going to see uh, really dozens or maybe scores or hundreds of different styles of micrometers and variations and uh, when I'm done talking about these I'm going to show you how to uh, the principles of a micrometer and how to read it and uh, since this will be a two-part video we'll even have a test on how to read it in the uh, second half. If you know how to read it of course you can pass on that. Now this particular micrometer has a little bit of a ball anvil on it and that is designed uh, to be used with tubing so that you could take a reading on your tubing like this and not get a false reading. 
On one of my other micrometers, there's an uh, attachment. This, uh, in other words, this little ball thing here can be taken on and off. And uh, you need to allow for the thickness of that, which I believe is 200 thousandths, which you would have to add on to your, uh, your reading. Before reading any micrometer or using the micrometer, be sure and wipe out the anvils with the hem of your shirt. Make sure there's no grit in there. And then uh, br bring it, uh, the anvils together and make sure that it zeroes out. And if it does not zero out and needs to be adjusted or there may be a, uh, maybe a tiny amount of dirt in there. So uh, always check that out. Now on the larger micrometers you have to use the appropriate standard. This is the one to two inch mic so you would use a one inch standard and uh, check it like this to make sure that it zeroes out. See if that focuses. I guess not. Some one inch standards would be made like this. Probably cheaper to make. And when you get into the bigger micrometers, here's a two to three. We also have a standard that we would check it with. So don't throw those away. You'll find those in the package when you buy a micrometer and that's the purpose of the standard. Now there's many other kinds of micrometers as well. This is uh, an inside micrometer that would be used uh, in an automotive shop primarily. Well you could use it in any shop but this one came from an automotive shop and it, uh, if I can get that out of there without everything falling out. And this is the micrometer itself and then you can add these rods on there uh, depending on how big of a bore that you're uh, going to check. And here's another one. I never have used this one. It's still got a lot of the protection on there. It's a Mitutoyu and that looks like it'll go up to six or eight inches. This one would probably go to only about five inches and that's for uh, like I say automotive use and uh, we wouldn't get cylinders bigger than that except on trucks. Now there's all kinds of depth micrometers also. They come in a set with extra rods because again the micrometer itself has only a one inch travel. Now when you get into these depth mics and the inside mics they read kind of backwards. We'll go over that again later. As long as I was talking about checking micrometers for accuracy and zeroing them out, I think we'll cover that right now. I just wiped the anvils clear on this one inch mic and it's just a little bit off. Can you see that? Less than a half a thousandth. So uh, in every package you were going to find one of these little wrenches. And this is what the wrench looks like. Get my hands out of there. And then if you look on the uh, back side of the micrometer right here, you see just a little bit of a hole and the uh, spanner wrench fits into that hole and you will be able to I'm going to use the other end here rotate that ever so slightly until it zeroes out and sometimes there's a little bit of trial and error there but I, uh, I came out pretty well considering I'm uh, straddling the camera with my arms but that's how you zero them out always check that and always clean the anvils. I can't emphasize that enough. When you're buying micrometers, always select micrometers that have satin chrome finish. They do not corrode and they're easy to read and uh, all the numbers show up nicely. So avoid the real old ones that are just uh, plain steel. I don't own any anymore so I have no samples to show you. Here's yet one other one I guess I forgot to show a minute ago. This is an inside micrometer. This is a Mitutoyu and this will read from 200 thousandths up to one inch and it would be used in this manner. Uh, tubing. Oh, let's see. Tubing or a slot or something like that and uh, most handy for that. and you could take your reading. Remember these read kind of backwards. 
Now when you handle micrometers, you should not swing them like this. Often you would see kids do that. If you want to make a rapid adjustment, run it up and down your arm like this. For instance, to open it up. That works very quickly and it does not damage the instrument. This is the proper way to hold it. On a one inch, of course the bigger ones are going to require two hands. So when you're taking a reading, for instance, with this one, and yes, here's yet one other one. I, I must have 40 micrometers. Hold them like this. And I'm gently turning that just to get a little bit of a pressure on it, and then I can take my reading. Now, micrometers read uh, to the thousandth of an inch, but some of them can read to the tenth of a thousandth. Now, a tenth of a thousandth would be uh, when you're somewhere in between the numbers, like you are right there. And the micrometers that read to the tenth of a thousandth will have an extra scale on the back. That's a vernier scale that will allow you to read to the tenth of a thousandth. I may discuss that later on if there's any interest, but... Um, you know, that's not something you can use very often. It is difficult to read unless you fully understand what a vernier scale is on uh, vernier calipers and other instruments that use a vernier scale. Perhaps the French say vernier. Okay, let's go over the parts of the micrometer so that you understand uh, the terminology. And I've taken this little steric micrometer apart which only took uh, 10 seconds, so it was no big deal. But here we have the frame, the anvil, the barrel, the thimble, and the spindle. Now on the spindle we've got a thread. Be sure and take your micrometers apart uh, once a year and put a drop of 3-in-1 oil on there. Also, uh, when I was teaching school, there would sometimes in the summer get corrosion right here and this uh, spindle would uh, freeze into this part where the pencil tip is. So I made it a point of oiling that uh, before I left for the summer. If a micrometer thread becomes sloppy, it can be tightened with this little nut here using that same spanner that I showed you before. And all that does is uh, there's a hole for the spanner. It pinches that nut down a little bit. So if your micrometer is too tight, you can also back that off just a little bit and then put your oil here. There's the internal thread. This thread has a pitch of 40 threads per inch. That's 40 threads per inch. Now remember that because I'm going to bring that up again later and tell you the significance of that. Of course that's true on American uh, standard micrometers, not metric. I do not know offhand what the, what the metric thread is, but that's 40 threads per inch. Again, frame, barrel, anvil, spindle, thimble. There are some other minor parts too which we're not going to go into right now. 